this is the unit three review video on the topic of antibiotics and the first thing I want to say is um, it's kind of a bad habit that I call them antibiotics it's better to think of them as antimicrobial drugs antimicrobial is a word that is synonymous with antibiotic though antibiotic has a very precise definition that I don't care about so um, you can see that in the slides, just no antimicrobial is better. So um, the first thing we talk about is the effect they have on society. There are a lot of um, aspects of our lives that we take for granted right now. Um, things like Bacterial infections after childbirth. Um, there was a time when that was a huge cause of maternal mortality. Uh, bacterial infections post-surgery was a huge cause of mortality. Um, these days, if we go into a clinic, we expect to leave that clinic better. But it's not a foregone conclusion um, and for a lot of human history medicine had nothing to offer medicine couldn't stop viruses and it couldn't stop bacteria so now we have vaccines that stop viruses and we have antibiotics and other antimicrobials for bacteria and fungi and protists and that has changed the world so what I want you to know is like how how they work and what is key to know about them that most people don't know. So um, some important words you need to nail down, make sure you go back and look and become confident with resistant versus sensitive or susceptible. susceptible. Um, what is resistant? What is sensitive? Who are we talking about? We're never talking about a patient who is resistant. We're talking about the bacteria infecting them or the fungi infecting them. Okay, so then we looked at major characteristics of antimicrobials, and those are things like mode of action. And the biggest, most common modes of action are inhibition of peptidoglycan synthesis. That's the first one. That's the most common. And there are a lot of different ways to say that. You could say cell wall disruption, but it's not really disrupting the cell wall. It's, it's not breaking the cell wall. The bacteria break it themselves, and the antimicrobial prevent them from fixing it. So peptidoglycan synthesis is really what's being um, inhibited. You could also say pep, um, cell wall synthesis is being inhibited. The other common one is translation inhibition, so the antibiotics um, block translation. Spectrum of activity, this is where we get full uh, broad spectrum and um, narrow spectrum, and this is just which microbes are killed by that antibiotic or which microbes are affected by it. Um, and this is not a thing we can predict. It is um, very complicated because it has to do with how the structure of the antimicrobial molecule interacts with the outer parts of the cell. And so anytime we modify an antimicrobial by adding a tiny atom to it, we change its spectrum of activity, but we don't change its mode of action. Um, pharmacology. I just want you to be able to think of some situations where if the pharmacology was wrong, treatment would fail. So, bacterial meningitis, bacteria growing in the meninges, that means an antibiotic to treat that has to cross the blood-brain barrier, and many of them don't. Um, what about a urinary tract infection? If you want to take an oral antibiotic to treat a urinary tract infection, it must be excreted by the kidneys. If you want to treat C. diff in the colon using an oral antibiotic, it cannot be absorbed by the small intestine. It has to get all the way to the colon. And if you want to treat C. diff using um, an in intravenous antimicrobial, 
it has to go from the blood into the digestive tract. It has to be excreted in feces. So those are the main pharmacology considerations, but there's also um, what enzymes break it down? How do you make the antimicrobial last longer? How do you make it concentrate in the tissues? And there are lots of things like that to know. So um, those are big. And then we didn't spend much time talking about toxicity, but you should know most antibiotics have some toxicity. Some of them are very toxic. And cost and convenience are going to determine often which ones you want to use. So um, something I spent a lot of time on in lecture and which the slides go through is the um, population model of infectious disease. And I want you to be able to explain the two scenarios. So um, the antibiotic worked, but then it stopped working. And this is what happens if there is a mixture of antibiotic resistant and antibiotic sensitive bacteria in your patient. And the sensitive bacteria get killed by the antibiotic, but the resistant ones don't. Um, and you'd say it worked because the majority of the bacteria die during antibiotic treatment till they're at a low enough population that the innate immune system can calm down and the symptoms go away. But then the resistant ones grow until there are enough of them that the symptoms come back. So that's what happens. And then the other one is um, the patient stopped taking antibiotics too soon. This is too long for me to go into in a review video, so go find it in your notes or go find it in the slides. But the point is, it's common to have a bacterial infection where some of the microbes are close to being resistant, but they're not resistant. They don't have enough mutations, or they don't have quite the right mutations. And if we use the antibiotic long enough, we kill them. But if we let them grow, their descendants might have the mutations that make them resistant. And if that happens, then we're back at the first scenario. Um, so more antimicrobial, wow, anti-more antimicrobial review. Okay, so uh, those situations take a while to get into. Um, we watched a video in class, and you can get a link to that in the slides, um, and it's good to know what did you see. And then we looked at um, cell wall synthesis. So how was, how was how were bell-bottom pants related to this? That's like the best um, analogy I know. And what part of that would be disrupted by a beta-lactam antibiotic. Um, so what we have to learn is um, what enzyme do the antibiotics inhibit and how. And here we could compare beta-lactam antibiotics versus vancomycin, which works at which blocks the same antibiotic in a different way. Make sure you know the difference. Um, and um, beta-lactam structures, what do they all have in common? And um, beta-lactam classes, you should know something about the penicillins and the cephalosporins and the carbapenems. And mostly, the most important thing to know about the cephalosporins is that there are two different sites on those molecules you can modify without changing the mode of action. And that gives us endless opportunities to make new cephalosporins. Um, whereas the penicillins were the first big group of antibiotics. The carbapenems are um, the broadest spectrum antibiotics. And they all work the same way. And then monobactam, um, 
this is the name of the class, and the only drug in it is astrinam. And the thing to know about that is it's broad spectrum against gram negatives, where most of the, like penicillins, most, mostly work against gram positives. Um, so what do all the classes have in common, and what's, um, what distinguishes them from each other? That's really what to know. Then resistance. What is a beta lactamase? How does it work? What does it do? How would that get moved from species to species? What about MRSA? What does that stand for? Can you spell it correctly? And why is it resistant to all the beta-lactame antibiotics? Um, so that's a whole thing. And one more whole thing before we move on that I forgot and came back to add is what is CRE? Carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. What are they? You don't have to spell enterobacteriaceae, but um, if I told you that you were infected by carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae, what would that tell you about how you have to be treated? Let's try this again. Even more antimicrobial review. Um, antimicrobial resistance versus virulence. They are not the same thing. They are not always connected. Make sure you understand what I just said. So people will often forget that a MRSA strain is not necessarily going to cause the most fatal infection that a Staphylococcus aureus can cause. Um, you just don't know when you're seeing a staph infection, whether it's MRSA or not, because MRSA are just a strain that have a special version of a gene. They're still Staphylococcus aureus, and they might or might not have the genes that other Staph aureus strains use to cause disease. Um, all right, so, hello. Then evolution. We looked at heritable traits, genetic variation, and selection based on traits. Again, those are the three things. When those are in place, we will see evolution. And that's what happens in those two scenarios in the population model. Once you can acknowledge that an infection is caused by a population of not identical cells that are capable of mutating, then you can understand that evolution will happen in a patient, especially if they're exposed to something that kills the vast majority of the cells. And there is an incredibly strong pressure um, that would select for a mutant that is resistant. Um, what we talked about very briefly was antivirals and the fact that they do not affect virions. So if you don't remember what virions are, go back and review, because that's important. And antivirals do not affect them. Antivirals block enzymes inside virion factories, so they prevent biosynthesis, usually. Um, how to delay antibiotic resistance. How are you going to delay that? Let's just write it out. Limit the spread of pathogens, and that limits genetic variation. Limit use of antibiotics. Um, if you don't need to use them, don't use them, because then you don't put an artificial selection for antibiotic resistance on a population. Use narrow spectrum antibiotics. Again, this avoids putting selection pressure on unnecessarily on a bunch of species that aren't causing a problem. Broad spectrum antibiotics selects for antibiotic resistance in the microbiota where there's no reason for it. Um, proper dose and duration. And this goes back to the second scenario where there are some risky cells in the population that might become resistant. You want to kill them before they mutate. Um, and then limit newer drug use. So as we discover new antibiotics, very slowly, way too slowly, 
As we discover them, they are precious and they should be last line drugs whenever possible. So they shouldn't be used, really, ideally in our lifetimes. Um, and then what I'll leave you with is that we are um, staring down the future of the post antimicrobial era where um, any any microbes that cause um, a um, where many pathogens will be resistant to any antibiotic that would have worked against them. So we will be going back to where lots of things that currently aren't seen as dangerous become dangerous. So look out for that, do your best to prevent it, and I'll see you at the next video.